Hey, welcome to Crooked Kitchen and today we are talking about vinaigrettes. If you ever had any questions about it, I'm here to answer them. Um, I personally made three vinaigrettes today that I'm going to be kind of talking about as well as why the heck would we make homemade vinaigrette versus buying it at the store. So I recommend making your own vinaigrette at home, um, A, because it's healthier and B, because it's quick and easy and you get to make it exactly how you want to taste it. Um, so with that, you know, there's no added sugars, there's no GMOs, there's no corn starch, xanthan gum, high fructose corn syrup. Wow, couldn't talk for a minute. <laughs> and then um, if I didn't say high in salt, as you know, well as, you know, all the other th kind of things that you kind of stumble upon when you read the back of a lot of uh, homemade videos and salad dressings in general so and it's just something fun to do you can make a large batch and stick it in your um, refrigerator it lasts up to seven to ten days um, which is great and then you know you have exactly what you're looking for without all of that extra sugar and you get to use um, high quality fat with your oils um, and again make it how you want it <laughs> so traditionally for a uh, French ratio of vinaigrette is a three to one um which is nice if you like a milder milder um vinaigrette you can do a two to one which what i'm talking about is oil to um vinegar or acid and then some people love really bold uh vinaigrettes so they do a one to one it all depends on your ingredients and exactly what your taste buds desire um, for me personally, I like a two to one um, for most situations, so that's kind of what I go with. And um, there's all sorts of things you can use. Um, champagne vinegar, which is kind of mild and um, bright, so that's kind of nice. I like to use that for apricots and peaches with, you know, maybe walnuts and a spinach salad. That's really good. Uh, white wine vinegar and rice wine vinegar, really bright and bold. Um, so that's usually nice with cucumbers and zucchini kind of style salads. Think Mediterranean. Um, but again, personal preference. So, and then there's red wine and sherry vinaigrettes, which are really nice. They're a little bit um, richer, but they still have that bright, bold flavors as well. Um, I like those with, you know, fennel and olive oil and feta uh, salads as well. And then we have the apple cider, which is kind of sweet and tangy. So, you know, you can do fruits, you can do, um, also, it's really good when you do like kind of like an apple cider honey and you take roasted vegetables or carrots and kind of toss that in there after they come out. It's delicious. <laughs> you can do all sorts of things, um, obviously. And then there's like lemon and lime, which we had talked about before, as well as um, orange. orange. Ugh, I can't talk today. Um, so orange. It's really nice, but it's not as bold and bright as lime and lemon. So what I highly recommend is squeezing and or juicing um, a few more oranges than you think and actually reducing that liquid by um, half or three quarters um, and then letting it cool before you add it to your vinaigrette. Um, and then a little bit of lemon juice with that because it's just not as bright and bold. So you really want that depth of orange flavor. And so that's why you reduce it. <laughs> Okay, and then um, common ingredients, obviously we've got the oil. Um, I like to use avocado or olive oil. Um, sometimes avocado is a little too strong for people, so they just kind of like to cook with it um, at high temperatures, but they don't really like to eat it in their salad dressings. Um, but olive oil is fantastic. Again, there's so many different varieties, so that's a big thing. Um, if you like more of the fruitier ones, all the way to the spicier ones, what I say is if you like to eat it on its own, that's the one for you. Um, always choose extra virgin. Don't do pure or light because a lot of those have fillers in them. And then you can use walnut oil, you can use flaxseed oil, all sorts of things. Just remember that those are a little bit stronger and they can overpower. So just be aware of that. If you want to kind of cut it, do 50-50. Um, I recommend that as well. And again, it all depends on what you're using it for. <laughs> Um, then we have, you know, the vinegars and the citrus that we talked about. Uh, Dijon adds a nice, like, complexity to it as well as creaminess. Uh, maple syrup as well as honey um, adds a little bit of sweetness and can balance out your acid um, to oil, like, ratio, 
which is really nice. And you know, sometimes you want a little bit of honey, especially in your poppy seed vinaigrette or honey Dijon vinaigrette. Mmm, that's my favorite. You can dip some delicious raw or roasted vegetables in that. Yes, that's my favorite. <laughs> um, garlic for more of a kick and a punch. It also can add a little bit of creaminess to it, which you'll discover with the one of the vinaigrettes that I made today. And then we've got the salt and pepper. Um, salt mostly enhances the flavor. Um, so that's kind of like all the stuff that we're uh, kind of discuss. If you have any questions or comment, definitely put it down below. Um, I will look forward to answering anything um, that I possibly can. And again, we're going to be doing creamy nut base and aioli base um, dressings on another video. So obviously when you make vinaigrette, you either need a blender, um, food processor, or whisk and bowl. Measure out your ratios. I highly recommend, unless you're an advanced cook and you just know exactly what you're doing. Um, zester for your garlic, um, lemon, lime zest, anything that you want to kind of like add in there. And then um, a jar. So you can use a jar instead of a whisk and um, a bowl and just shake the crap out of it. <laughs> and then it's nice because then that's your storage container and you just put it right in the fridge. Um, so today um, I made three different dressings and I'll show you examples of salad that go with them. Um, first of all, uh, I did a little of uh, coconut amino liquid aminos and then I mixed that with avocado oil as well as salt and two tablespoons of lemon juice. Again, I'm gonna write all the recipes out for you, so don't worry. And you usually, you know, make use two to three tablespoons per salad so you can make a half a cup to you know three cups of dressing and kind of last you the week so yeah again you just shake it up and make this delicious um vinaigrette it's really nice it's it's a little bit more subtle uh so that's it, you know it's got a little bit of sweetness a little tartness um and i love that vinaigrette with some beautiful fresh greens, a nice salad mix, um, fresh strawberries because they're in season right now, um, sprinkle of flaxseed and pepitas and or pumpkin seeds. Um, it tastes delicious. It's kind of sweet, kind of tart, um, but you got the nice fats from the flaxseed as well as the oil. And it's just a nice either side salad or lunch salad. You can add avocado on top of there. Um, do what you want to do. <laughs> okay, so the next one that I made is 50-50, um, so it's lemon and rice wine vinegar. I added one cl medium clove of garlic, uh, salt, and um, avocado oil in there. And so you shake it up. It's creamy. It's delicious. And I love that for um, my cauliflower salad. Um, this also tastes really good when you roast the cauliflower and dress it with all these ingredients, but we've got sunflower seeds, um, cauliflower, uh, scallions, parsley, and um, caramella olives. Toss that in there, kind of actually the longer it sits, it marinates and it tastes so good, especially for the next few days. So again, lunch salad, another dinner, all sorts of things, okay? Um, so there's that one. And then our last one is going to be a sherry vinaigrette with olive oil. I did add um, a teaspoon of both honey and Dijon into there. And so that one I love to mix with cucumbers as well as red onion. And we've got basil and parsley. I did sun-dried tomatoes this time um, because tomatoes are not yet in season here. I'm waiting for those. They're coming. It's going to be so good. So interchange those out. Um, and then on top, I just have that nut cheese. Um, this one was simple. It was just uh, lemon juice and uh, nutritional yeast with cashews blended and um, filtered water. But it's just to die for. And again, the longer it sits, the better it tastes. <laughs> So I hope that kind of helps you out. You can make all sorts of different vinaigrettes. Ooh, one more thing, maceration. Um, if you want to uh, add shallots or red onion or anything to your vinaigrette, I highly recommend taking your acid, which is vinegar or citrus, and then mincing or slicing up your onion or shallot or garlic and letting it sit in that acid for at least 15 minutes. It helps 
tenderize and take away that harshness of the onion or garlic and kind of tenderize it and sweeten it. And so then you want to take that and mix that in with your olive oil or avocado oil and um, herbs or spices, whatever else you're going to be adding in there. Um, so that's it. I hope you learned something and uh, yeah, I'll see you next week. Again, this is Marcel Crooks at the Crooked Kitchen. Hope you enjoy.